So in this video, we're going to talk about B-cell development, which will bring in a number of the things that we've talked about in previous videos. So we're talking about in your bone marrow every day, billions of B-cells undergoing the processes of VDJ recombination, adding junctional diversity in order to produce um, light chain and heavy chain proteins that can possibly assemble into B-cell receptors and immunoglobulins. So this process all starts in the bone marrow with stem cells, the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. These are the cells that have the potential to turn into any one of your uh, white blood cell or red blood cell types. So these cells undergo division, they're stem cells, so they can repopulate themselves as well as having some of their daughter cells differentiate into the lymphoid uh, lineage. And lymphoid lineage cells include B cells and T cells and NK cells. We're just gonna focus on B cells right now. So every day in your bone marrow throughout your body, two and a half billion cells undergo B cell development, which means they undergo the journey of generating VDJ recombination and testing their immunoglobulins um, to see if they can make a functional, useful uh, B cell receptor. So we're gonna go through that process now. So two and a half billion, that's a lot. All right, so let's start with the heavy chain gene. And again, you remember that the heavy chain gene locus, located on chromosome 14, which you have two chromosome 14s, uh, the germline germ conformation of the heavy chain gene looks like this. There are many variable gene segments, about 40, about 23 diversity gene segments, and about six joining gene segments. And then there are all those constant regions as well. So this is the germline conformation. When B cells start out their lives, and right now we're in a stage called the early pro B cell, this is what your DNA looks like. And this is the DNA that you inherit from either your maternal or your paternal chromosome. So DNA, nothing's been cut, nothing's been touched, nothing's attached, nothing's been removed. So the first thing that happens are the RAG enzymes are turned on, these recombination enzymes. The RAGs make the VDJ recombinase, and they land randomly on RSS sequences. And they first land on RSSs that will allow you to join the D to the J gene segments. So this is occurring in the early pro B cells. So as we learned in previous videos, when we talked about recombination in the heavy chain gene, the RAGs land on RSS sequences, sequences randomly. They cut, they form hairpins, they drag these pieces of DNA together, they unclip the hairpins, unfolding them, they make P nucleotides, the enzyme TDT enters and puts in N nucleotides. This whole area is joined together, and you have a DJ recombination, G DJ rearrangement here. That happens in early pro B cells. Once that occurs, these cells undergo mitosis, and you have a couple of cells. Now we call them late pro B cells. And in these cells, the RAG enzyme then lands randomly on an RSS in front of or next to one of the variable gene segments. And when it does, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to cut, it's going to make the hairpin, drag it to the D gene segment, open up the hairpin, TDT comes in, fills in nucleotides for junctional diversity. And now what you have is a rearranged heavy chain gene, variable linked to diversity, linking to joining with random nucleotides put in between. So are we done? No, we're not done because this might not be very good for us. Why is that? Well, uh, we are trying to create an open reading frame that's gonna be transcribed and translated to make heavy chain protein. So there's a start code on at the beginning. There's a stop code on all the way in the constant region. But isn't it possible that there could be a stop codon put in via junctional diversity? Remember, the TDT enzyme randomly puts in nucleotides. Um, the hairpins randomly are cut. Um, so it is possible to either put in stop codons between the junctions or have an um, open reading frame that doesn't read all the way through to the constant region. So we call these non-productive rearrangements. So when VDJ rearranging, uh, VDJ recombination is occurring, not all of them produce a functional open reading frame that will make a complete heavy chain protein. In fact, about two thirds of the time, this process fails. It's a pretty high failure rate. But the nice thing is that the cell can recover because it could basically say, well, this won't, I join these together in this way, 
and that didn't give me a, a heavy chain protein, a complete heavy chain protein, I'll go back and I'll try a different V or I'll try a different J. And if that fails, then I maybe will go to the other heavy chain chromosome uh, because heavy chain, we've got two copies, maternal and paternal. Maybe I'll go to the other one on the second chromosome. So eventually, hopefully, there is a productive free arrangement, which means a variable gene segment hooked up to diversity, hooked up to adjoining, gives you a complete open reading frame that will transcribe and translate into a full length heavy chain protein. So that's a productive rearrangement. Hopefully we get there. If so, that's great. Um, now we uh, have the cells that have VDJ hooked up to each other, random V to random D to random J with junctional diversity. So now the cells are called pre-V cells. So we've had a little bit of mitosis, we've had a little cluster of these cells. What's gonna happen in the pre-B cell? Well, we're now gonna have rearrangement of the light chain genes. So we haven't touched the light chain genes yet. They're in their germline conformation. Remember how many copies of the light chain gene you have. You actually have four copies, two light chain kappa genes on chromosome 22, two light chain lambda genes on chromosome two. So what happens in your pre-B cells is that the Rag enzymes get turned on and they're going to attack and recombine the light chain gene. They'll pick one out of the four and they'll land on RSS's cutting and making hairpins, bringing two pieces together, a V to a J. They'll throw in some nucleotides, the TDT, to make junctional diversity. And hopefully you get a productive rearrangement. We're gonna have a higher chance here because we have only one joint between gene segments, not two. And also, we have four copies of the gene to, to play with, four copies to experiment with. So even if uh, uh, we don't get a productive rearrangement on one, we can get a productive rearrangement probably when we go through all four of them. So there's actually an 85% success rate in rearrangement of the light chain gene. And again, success means you can make, you can read through the start codon all the way to the stop codon and make a functional light chain protein. So now we have Heavy chain gene has recombined, the light chain gene has recombined, and we have genes to make proteins. So the heavy chain gene makes the heavy chain protein, and I've drawn it there, and it's going to have some variable region due to its VDJ gene segments and junctional diversity. It's gonna have some unique and specific three-dimensional structure. The light chain gene, it's turned on. It uh, is going to have its variable region, which will have some unique shape as well. And what we have, is the heavy chain and light chain proteins assembling. We also have the Ig alpha and Ig beta proteins, which I've drawn in yellow. Remember, those are components of the B cell receptor. This whole complex assembles and is on the surface of the B cell. I have skipped through a number of steps of B cell development, which, which I don't really want you to know. I'm not really interested in. There's a lot of steps that we could talk about, but I'm leaving out many of them. So. We got, we've gotten here, we've made a B cell receptor, and it has some unique and specific antigen binding site. And again, the way that was generated, how? You have recombination of the heavy chain gene, recombination of the light chain gene, you had uh, junctional diversity put in between gene segments, and then you had the combination of heavy chain and light chain coming together. And that's gonna give you the a unique antigen binding site, and that's what gives you antibody diversity, the fact that you can bind, in theory, trillions of different antigens without ever having seen them before is due to all these processes that are occurring in your B cells. So we are now at the point where we are immature B cells. So we have a number of cells in our bone marrow that are immature B cells. They're not ready to go out into the world yet. We still have to test them to make sure that they are not self-reactive. So that'll be in the next video, testing immature B cells to make sure that they are not harmful to our bodies.